Hola, bienvenidos a Lightspeed Spanish y a Gordon's Diaries. This week we're doing something different. Why? Because this week I'm going to talk in English and I'm going to tell you the five things that you must never do when you are in Spain. Nos vemos en la segunda parte. Okay, señores y señoras, ladies and gentlemen, this is in English because this is something that really goes out to English speakers. People from my culture, people who are accustomed to the culture of their own country. Now, this might apply to other countries as well, but there are five things that you must never do in Spain when you are with a Spanish family in a Spanish group or at a Spanish party, or anything Spanish-ish, you mustn't do. Number one, do not, under any circumstances, give a Spanish person their coat or walk them to the front door when they tell you that they have to go. Never, don't do it. Do not be suckered into thinking for one moment, that just because a Spanish person has said to you, I have to go, tengo que irme. Tío, tengo que irme. Do not think that that means that they have to go. At that moment, do not grab the coat and think, well, as we would in the UK, well, the centre had to go, so they need to go. Because when you say you have to go in the UK, that means you have to go. We say it to allow people to understand that we have to go. Mm -mm, not in Spain, that's not what they're doing. What they're doing is signaling you that perhaps in half an hour, 45 minutes, an hour, they will leave. It isn't an immediate thing. It demands no immediate reaction. You must control yourself within. You must control the urge to say, wait, well, if you have to go, I better let you go then. Because it would be rude in the UK if somebody said to you, I have to go, for you to then start talking about something else and not allow them to go. In Spain, it is incredibly rude for you to believe somebody when they tell you that they have to go and for you to help them out the front door. Don't do it. Do not do it. Do not walk them to the front door. In fact, just as a little addition, you must maintain an inner zen-like calmness. When they say, I have to go, I have to go, mira, tengo que irme, you, in that moment, take a deep breath and you say to yourself inside, allow them to make the first move. That's it. This is something I've learned. Allow them to make the first move. Then you watch as they kind of slowly, if we sped it up, if we looked at it like multiplied by a hundred times the speed, you would see that they actually would just walk out the front door. Slow it down to life speed and you'll find that they do make the way toward the front door in little steps, but every step must include a conversation. Quite often they get to the front door and quite often the conversation at the front door is longer than the entire stay. That's okay. This is what Spanish people do. This is not our country. It's not our culture. We have to live and breathe their culture. So finally, when they do go, they go. But be aware that the exit might be a lot longer than you can imagine. Do not, under any circumstances, never, jamás, give a Spanish person a cup of tea or coffee at the temperature that we have the custom to drink it. O sea, hot. Do not give them a cup of hot tea or hot coffee without a very, very strict warning. The warning is, be aware, that tea is 
magma volcanica. Basically, it's an evolutionary thing. Brits, certainly Brits, probably Americans, I don't know, Australians, very likely, we have evolved a mechanism, a hot drinking mechanism. It is the mechanism of sucking air across the surface of a very hot drink and then sipping a tiny bit of that drink into the mouth after it had been sufficiently cooled by the movement of air and the evaporation which then causes cooling. It's an evolutionary thing. Spanish people have never ever developed that mechanism. They do not have a sipping mechanism. What they have is a drinking mechanism. And so, if you go to Spain and you get a cup of coffee and you are a British person, normally you'll find that it's rare that you get a hot cup of coffee. In fact, very rare. Normally you get a medium cup of coffee. If you're unlucky, you'll get a cup of coffee del tiempo. Now, what is del tiempo? Del tiempo is of the weather. So the same t room temperature, let's say that, room temperature. Now, there's a quotation in the Bible which says, because you are neither hot nor cold, but lukewarm, I am going to vomit you out of my mouth. This is what we want to do when we have a cup of coffee del tiempo. It is neither hot nor cold. That is a very popular way of taking coffee in Spain. So effectively, if you want to watch, if you want to see a Spanish person spitting out coffee, then what you do is you give them a hot cup of coffee. They drink it, they don't know, they have no mechanism, and they burn themselves. You, they're going to have blisters all over the mouth, they're going to burn the tongue, and they're going to spit it out. Okay, And if you want to see a Brit spit out coffee, then you give them a coffee del tiempo. They will drink it and they will spit it out in disgust. Okay, so never give a Spanish person a hot cup of coffee without a strict warning. And even then, you see, you must understand there are levels of hot. There is the British level of hot and there's the Spanish level of hot. British level of hot is this. We can, and this is what I do on a daily basis. I drink hot water with honey. I pour hot water directly from the kettle that has just boiled, probably running around about 98 degrees C. I pour it into the cup, mix it. Then I get into my evolutionary sipping mechanism and I can drink it directly. So let's say water at 95 degrees C, I can drink that without any problem. That is hot, okay? If you say it's hot to a Spanish person, they're thinking around about 50 degrees, around about halfy halfy. all right? That's their hot. If you want to talk about the level of heat for a Brit, if you want to say hot to a Spanish person, 95 degrees, you've got to use other terminology. Magma volcanica, yeah? Arrojo vivo, arrojo vivo, for example. These are things that you need to say to warn them because hot if you say está caliente no it doesn't work no vale you've got to say está tan caliente que te vas a quemar la boca then maybe you're okay so be careful on that front always a warning never bother never take the time never spend 16 years, trying to convince Spanish people that it's better if they close a door behind them during the winter when it's minus three in the street and you're trying to heat the house up. Don't try and convince them that closing a door behind them is better than leaving it wide open, gaping, yawning. Why? Because Spanish people have a different cultural outlook on doors. If you come from the UK, especially up north, like what I do, you will find that closing doors is of a great importance. There are two things that we used to do religiously, apart from going to church. One was to switch the lights off. If not, you would hear your father say, 
It's like Blackpool bloody illuminations in this house. A statement that has been used throughout the UK by every parent. And number two, shut that bloody door. We close doors. Why? Because if you leave a door open, two things happen. One is air enters. Freezing cold air enters from any other room. Two, hot air leaves. You see, it's it's the, the law of thermodynamics. Cold air comes in and hot air goes out. Just a bog standard thing. This is how tornadoes. I mean, sometimes if you leave two doors open, you can have a small tornado in your living room. This is what happens. So, we have learned to close doors, especially when the heating's on. Okay. And years ago, it used to be if the thermostat was on to heat the water up, disaster if you were running water. And if you left the thermostat on, even more disaster. Goodness knows what the electricity bill was going to be like. Well, it's the same. If you've got the heating on and you're heating the house up, don't open doors. I hear in Spain... That's not a major priority. In fact, I would say it's not even a priority. It's below priority into the what on earth are you talking about? In fact, I would go as far as to say that here in Spain, it's seen as something very positive to leave a door open. They have the perception that air needs to move around. I've got no problem with that. I agree that air does need to move around. Stagnant air means death. However, in the 55 years that I have lived on this planet, during the winter, I've always closed doors and I haven't died and I haven't been short of air. It's been okay. It was safe and warm. And so Spanish people don't understand that and they think that they have to open windows and doors even when it's minus seven in the street because air needs to move, it needs to circulate. And so if you happen to live or be in a Spanish family, then get accustomed to having doors opened. I spend most of my day closing doors and switching lights off. It's just my job as a Brit. My job is to close doors. And I've tried every element of suggestion, of coercion, of um, physical violence to get people to close doors and it still doesn't happen. And so, and in the summer, worse. I'm not even going to go into the summer. Um, house full of flies. So, don't bother. Don't bother. The best thing to do, my advice, my advice is if you see a door open and it's freezing, just close it. And that's it. And then three or four seconds later, a Spanish person will open it again. And then you just go and close it. All right, you spend your whole day walking backwards and forwards from the couch to the door and back to the couch. But it's okay. It's something that needs to be done in order for us not to spend 7,000 euros a month on heating. It's our job as a Brit. Do not ever with a Spanish person, do not ever, 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 don't consider it, laugh about death. Do not make a joke about death. Do not make light of death. Do not titter, harumph. Do not do any positive noise about death. Death here in Spain is viewed as something extremely serious. And it is. My death would be fairly serious were it to happen. And when Cynthia sees this video, it could well happen. However, in the UK, for example, we have learned to laugh in the face of diversity. We have learned to laugh at death. Why? It's our way of overcoming it. We're not great at expressing ourselves and we're not great at showing emotion. And so we prefer to laugh when death happens. Not instantly, not in the moment, you you know, your husband falls to the floor dead, you're not going to burst into laughter. But you might do later on when you're telling a little story. For example, I'll tell you a joke that is not funny in Spain. It's just zero funny. I'll tell you two jokes. So the joke, number one, is uh, Betty's talking to a friend and she says, uh, on Sunday past, I sent my husband down to the, the allotment to get some sprouts for the Sunday dinner. And as he was bending over in the force of picking the sprouts, he had a heart attack and died. And the friend says, well, what did you do, Betty? She said, well, I just had to open a tin of peas. 
not funny in Spain. Like zero funny. And I'll, I'll give you I'll give you something you can balance that out with. When when I was in Morocco, I told the joke to a Moroccan friend, and I, my joke was this: How many men does it take to wash the dishes? Answer: None, because it's a woman's job. That joke, ha ha ha, very funny in the UK. My friend Youssef looked at me and said, yes, and your point would be, and what's funny about that? You see, because in Morocco, it is the woman's job to wash the dishes. Now, maybe it's changed now, but it was when I was there. So it's the same as trying to laugh about death with a Spanish person. Not funny. They, they, they have no perception of any kind of funniness. Okay, none. Another joke that just doesn't go down well in Spain. Uh, What's up with you, uh, love? I'm furious. Why? Well, my mum bought a bag for life on Saturday and on Sunday she died. Okay. In the UK, very funny. Bag for life on the Saturday, dead on the Sunday. Ha ha ha. Only got one day's worth of life out of it. In Spain, zero funny. They look at you, if you tell a joke like that, if you laugh about death, they look at you with the look of, you are probably one of the worst people I've ever, ever met. That is the most horrific thing I've ever heard. Okay? And no amount of saying, well, it's a cultural thing, doesn't work. They're not happy. So don't laugh about death. If you want to titter, which happened to me sometimes, go to the loo and titter, and then they think that you're laughing at something else. Okay? Number five, do not. And this is probably the most important do not ever in the history of do not do this with the Spanish person. Never, ever consider the possibility that it might be okay to criticize Spanish food. Never do it. Never do it. Better that you say that the Pope is a transvestite. That would go down better than criticising Spanish food. Never do it. And if you're a Brit, worse. Worse for you. Worse for you if you dare ever criticise Spanish food and you are British, prepare yourself for the wrath of a Spanish person. You see, Spanish people... For them, food is up there with oxygen. In fact, it's on par. Oxygen, God, living forever, having a superpower, food. Okay? Don't ever criticise it. Because what you're doing in the act of criticising their food, you are saying that everything that they ever, ever believe, and what their belief is, that Spanish food is the best in the world, clearly, and... They're going to look at you and say, on what basis have you got any right to criticise our food when your food is so shite? Because they know for a scientific fact that British food is rubbish. They know it. Whether it be true or not, it's not. You see, we're not talking about truth here. We're talking about cultural perceptions. The cultural perception is that if you go to the UK, you're going to eat really badly and be miserable. Okay? Add that to the weather. Uh, yeah. And Brexit, that's it. Miserable as hell. So, but they know that they have certain dishes that upon eating them, fill you with such joy that you want to dance La Macarena. This is... They know this, and this happens. When a Spanish person is having breakfast, they're talking about what they're going to have for lunch. When they're having lunch, they're talking about what they're going to have for the evening meal. When they're having Christmas Eve meal, they're talking about what they're going to have on New Year's Eve. This happens. Okay, Food is the number one. And they know that they have so many dishes and so many things that nobody ever, ever, could ever criticize Spanish food. And so never do it. Never do it. Never say, for example, well, that was nice, but it would have been a bit better with some gravy on it. Okay? Never, ever, ever say that. Never say that would have been nice if it had been a bit hotter rather than 
tepid. Never say that. Never say that. Never, ever, ever. Do not say, that would have been a bit better had there not have been half a kilo of salt on it. Don't do it. Don't do it. You stay silent. And when asked, you say, Está de puta madre. Está riquísima. That's it. That is your reply. Yeah? Para chuparse los dedos. That is your reply. You do not enter into any level of criticism. Okay? No, no, no. No, no. If you do, then you pay the price. Then people will dislike you for the rest of eternity. The rest of your life, their life, and anybody else's life. That might have dragged on a little bit longer. Okay? You'll be drawn, taken out of the will, um, thrown into the street. You will. Castigated. Ousted. From Spain. So, there are the five do nots. So I hope you found those valuable. And although I may be talking with a bit of my tongue in my cheek, these are real do nots. Don't do them. Don't do them. I'm laughing about them, but don't do them. And I'm telling you why. Because I've done them. And I have paid the price. So never again. So just you go about your business. You make sure that you've got a microwave handy. And if you get a coffee, stick it in the microwave and just heat it up a bit more. And and if and if you you know if if you find the food a bit salty or whatever, just make sure you drink plenty of water afterwards. You know, and then wait for three days before you can have a wee. These are things that you, you do. And if you know if somebody dies and something funny happens, just just laugh within rather than without, because you will end up without if you do laugh. Okay, chicos, muchísimas gracias por pasar un ratito conmigo sobre las cosas que no se debe hacer. Hasta luego.